What's up, Internet? So I've entered into a very um, new place in my life where I'm happy and stuff, and things are going well, and, like, bills are getting paid on time without a lot of stress. So I'm, I'm going hiking now, and I'm hoping that it all doesn't fall apart all of a sudden, as has been the pattern of my life where I've maybe failed to be as grateful as I should before God in the moments of, you know, other times in my life when things were going really well, where I was doing good with a female, I had a companion, a partner, and was certain that it was going to work out, and then the next thing I know I'm dumped and living in my car, just so depressed I can't stop smoking weed constantly. And I'm really just, you know, like, checking in now to be like, oh, like, so does, does anybody else out there get real nervous? Maybe not nervous, what's the right word? Just, like, when you discover that you're grateful and your relationships are healthy and you're kind of where you want to be and you're just on your P's and Q's in life in general... Do, 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 do you find this restlessness in your heart? Like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just, it won't really leave me. And so I, I think maybe it's a good thing, you know. I was going to call this one my beef with God. But from what I've just talked about so far, about, you know, like the, the restlessness of the satisfied, uh, hardworking white guy. Um... You know, it's like, I'm satisfied with where I'm at now. I'm working hard enough. And that, yeah, that's been such a jinx in my past that I'm like, fuck, am I jinxing it just by observing it? By by saying, by daring to be like, okay, I'm happy. And it's like, is that is that just like a thousand demons are like, he's happy, swarm! You know, like, is, is that how this shit works? Or they're like... We could probably get him on a non-transferable loan debt now. <laughs> you know, like what? Like what's? Fuck! I really hope I just go up from here. You know, like I really hope that I can finally just go forward in life, and that Jackie doesn't like explode with an aneurysm or some shit. Uh, you know, this is my fiance. For those of you who don't know, I'm engaged. I'm getting married in June on either the third or the fourth. We haven't quite decided. But uh, that'll be our two-year anniversary. And she's such a good woman. I don't really, de like, I barely deserve her. <laughs> but we work really well together, you know. And she, she's great. So I'm, I'm always trying to, like, live up to her, her good spirit and her obvious alignment of her life path with a more godly one than mine. Like, my, I, I, I'm a sinful guy. Like, I still indulge in some weed. Um, from time to time, I mean, I'm lying. I, I do it a little regularly, to be honest. But it's either on or off with me with weed. Like, I know I've slipped up, you know, the last couple months, and it's like, I don't really need it. It's there, and I'm finishing up what I got, you know, and I'm switching over to the vaporizer for, like, future endeavors. I'm going to buy from the cheap little dispo and not make it a big financial problem. But I backslid like, like a motherfucker. And, like, probably none of y'all even noticed um, because I've been smoking weed regularly for so long that I'm capable of, like, barely coming across like a guy who smokes weed. But, you know, I've noticed a little bit of the lag time between my thoughts that wasn't there before. I've noticed in my podcast before I got... Just, just... I don't have any good excuses. I just backslid, you know. I just, like, one day I was like, all right, I'll eat that edible that I've had sitting around. And the next day I was like, that was great. I forgot how good of a night of sleep I can get and how that restlessness that I was talking about in my art, it was there in the beginning. Like, it really... For whatever it's worth, we puts my neurotic ass at ease in a, in a way that not much else can, you know. And, and um, you know, if I have, like, a... Like, my... my daily requisite of energy to spend is like a 10 mile run <laughs> like if I did that every day I'd be like feeling as normal as you do after you watch the Simpsons you know like that's you know without that without spending about 10 miles worth of calories every day of my life 
I'm just stir crazy. Like I threw my back out yesterday, right? That's why I'm here being restless and going hiking anyway. I'll be like hobbling along a trail for like four miles here in a bit. But I bent over to do something on a solar array and I just, something went in my spine. I'm like, oh fuck, now we gotta do, we, we, were, we were tearing it down, me and Mason. And I had to do the whole rest of the thing. I took a little five minute break, stretched up, and then we took down the other half of the array. It sucked, it was painful, and I was like very glad when it was over. And I woke up this morning not much better, not really ready to go back to work for Mike over there. But, you know, it's, it, was, it, was a, it was a check-in point for, you know, my own sense of self. It's like, hey, asshole, you can't really afford, your health can no longer afford to be flip-flopping in and out of your pot problem because you did get sick this year because, yeah, I froze to death in the Airbnb and then I got sick. I don't think it was the fucking COVID because I'm not retarded. Um, and I know the difference between a leprechaun and a short person. Anyway, um, so I got sick, you know, and that was like a reminder. It was like, hey, you too can get sick. And even myself re-listening to that last podcast, which I thought was a lot better than this one, you know, already I can tell that this one's kind of like I'm sorting shit out. But in the last one, I could tell, you know, I had a lot more sorted out. I had a lot more stuff readily available to talk about. Oh, by the way, my beef with God is the same beef that I've always had with God. And it's it's intended for comedy. I'm not really questioning the design of the creator. That's up to him. <laughs> but why the fuck are my nuts on the outside, God? That makes no sense to me. And then stupid people are like, well, your nuts are on the outside because they require a lower temperature than the rest of your body to produce sperm. And I'm like asshole you're not down to the you know strip the painting down to the canvas i want to know why the fuck my nuts are gotta be on the outside like why do they have to have that coolant temperature regulation factor in them that makes no sense none it's just a fragile thing that hurts when i get kicked and dangles there like a punchline like what the fuck god you think that's funny to design it's like we're made in the image of god well then he was a bad architect when it comes to male bodies all right you could have put, and this is this is all for comedy. Again, Lord, please don't smite me for criticizing you. I'm not, but it is. There's a very funny angle here because what the fuck are my testicles doing dangling between my legs? I'm not I'm not gonna go Bruce Jenner on you guys, but like, what the fuck are they doing there? For real, like I've had three testicle operations. I've thought about this three, one, two, three testicle operations in my life. Like at first, it was a varicocele when I was 12. And I was humiliated. I told everybody I had like a, a lower abdomen surgery that I had to go out of school from because I was like fucking 12. It's humiliating to be like, yeah, my balls are all fucked up, guys. And I hid it until this asshole that we used to hang out with actually kind of respected him, even though he was an asshole. In retrospect, he was probably like totally respectable all the way. I was just kind of a dumbass. But this guy, Doug Driscoll, right, that I went to high school with. And he's an asshole enough, I don't give a fuck if, if, I've, if I'm doxing him, like, fuck him. Um, but he was like, yeah, like, you know, I had that surgery, a bunch of us have had that surgery, you're the only one who decided to lie about it, you pussy, just own up to it and move on with your life. And I was, you know, props, Doug, wherever the fuck you are in life, like, that was a good point. You know, but I tried to hide it, and I was like, there's no shame in talking about this shit, like, we all human, we all have body parts, some of them are gonna malfunction, if you think you're fucking perfect, just give it a little time. Um... So I had a testicular varicocele. It's where a vein forgot to stop growing in my balls. That got operated on when I was 12. It was humiliating. My testicles swelled up to the size of an avocado, my left one, and then um, swelled back down, leaving me with a long, droopy, dangling-ass nutsack that I carried around with me and explained away to women, um, since no men have ever seen my balls. Uh, women only see my balls. You know. I explained it away to them, like, yeah, I got this, here's why it's droopy and dangly and looks like an old man's balls. I, I get it, it sucks. And then I went in for a testicle operation later in life because I had a hydro seal, which is when your ball fills up with air, water like an airbag. And this is like, you know, 20 years later, I have the second operation on my, on my nuts. And um, they fuck it up. It doesn't take. It just, it comes, the problem comes right back on me. And I'm like, in the first in the first case, I was like, yo, Doc, can you shave off some of my scrotch? I got too much scrotch, bro. 
And he was like, oh, you're going to be in there. I'm going to be on the table. Like, how hard is it to take your scalpel and go like that, you know, and just sew it back together all the same? You know, I just have too much balls from this 12-year-old operation or 20-year-old operation that I have. And he was like, well, that's an aesthetic procedure, you know. And then he fucked up the, the non-aesthetic procedure. So I'm like, yeah, about that aesthetic procedure. I, you mind throwing that one in now that I'm giving you a second chance to get this right? And he was like, I'll hook you up. So now I have young 20-year-old guy nuts again. They look fine. Thank you for asking. And welcome to the podcast, all new, new subscribers. Thank you for being here. I'm glad that you're on board with hearing about my testicles and my beef with God. So my beef with God persists. Why the fuck are my nuts on the outside? Why the fuck do they have to be cooler than the rest of my body to regulate sperm production? That's shit gay. What the fuck, God? It's like you're playing a prank on all of mankind, and then they're all running around like, we're made in the image of God. Well, then he fucked up. <laughs> all right? <laughs> he fucked up. I don't think Adam or David or whatever the fuck the first man was should have balls on the outside. I'm not saying you should have a vagina. No problems with the penis. The penis is one thing. It goes in between your legs. There's one gap between your legs. One thing going in between that gap and flopping around makes perfect sense. It's fine. You know, it can be a shriveled little thing until it's time to perform. That's all fine and good. Um, but to have two things that don't like symmetrically line up in, in that gap and like two things in one gap is stupid. Put one thing in one gap. Obviously. Obviously. So I will call this one my beef with God because it's funny, but it's true too. Like I don't get it. I don't get how how people could be like, we're made in the images of God. And it's like, you, have you, as as conceptualizing interpreters of the divine word, forgotten about your nuts? You really think that your nuts were made in the image of God? What the fuck are y'all talking about? Like, I, I get that our creativity is godly. I get that it's a godly thing to to create, to to build, to take aspects of the creation and make them better, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you can't really create wood. You can only orient it with other, you know, you can't create metal, but you can shape it into screws. You can't create really anything. It's all been created by God. Obviously. Obviously. This is why atheists are so fucking dumb. Like, like they can't... I, I love Jim Bob for just dis dissecting this dumb atheist arguments, you know, because that's not, that's not a skill set that I have. I can call bullshit on stuff rhetorically you know like like i think that all jokes aside the testicles disprove that we are made in the image of god that's a nice idea and it, it, okay let, let's play devil's advocate to my position here about the nuts um about the nuts okay maybe man deserves to have his ego knocked down a little bit so that pride doesn't overtake him and so god gave him a couple of nuts to be like, yo, even a child can flick these and have pain affect you. You know, you're not, you know, it's like a constant reminder of your mortality, like that king that had the guy whisper in his ear, like, you're going to die one day, you're a mortal, you are not a god. You know, maybe that's what testicles are to, to man. They're a constant reminder that you are here temporarily, that you're fragile, that you can be broken. You know, like, I've met some some burly motherfuckers, guy, the kind of guys who literally could whoop my ass with one hand tied behind their back and their shoelaces tied together. Like I've met some some scary strong dudes in the world, and I heard this insight. You know, it's like from Leo Gura, who I, I flip flop on Leo Gura a lot. I like him, I don't like him, I like him, I don't like him. But he's he's an interesting thinker, and he he puts in the work. But uh, he was talking about how the the true value of materialism or something or other and he's like let's say that you're a guy who goes to the gym you you go to the gym you work out every day of your life you become the strong literally the strongest man in the world and then he's like if i load a gun and put it to your head and i pull a trigger and a, send a bullet through your brain you know, i didn't have to get us do a single push-up to be able to do that like that's how powerful you truly are and that's maybe like I, I'm probably not wording it correctly but you get the idea right it's like anybody can take your power like power over man is something that can be taken at any time like you want to be powerful over men like that's a fool's errand I learned this when I read the fountainhead you know baby in the bathwater power over nature is true power being able to and and you can't have 
power over nature without a respectful reverence for nature. So maybe that's what our balls are for. They're supposed to teaching us to revere nature, to accept what nature is, to accept the fact that I got these two little orbs that hang between my legs that could be kicked by a four-year-old and leave me a crumpled mass of, of, of crying, like, oh, puking on the sidewalk. You know, like, men are fragile, and, and um, the testicles remind us of that, but that's really just me playing devil's advocate. Like, the majority of my brain is going, what the fuck? And I'm not, like, none of my, like, genuine emotions, I'm not, like, praying at night, like, and please, God, reconsider your design about my nuts. Like, I mean, please, God, don't don't let any more bullshit happen to my nuts. I'm not trying to go in for a fourth testicle operation for shit. Like, I, please leave my nuts alone and let me make babies with them. Please, I want a family so bad. Oh, And that's something that I do feel emotional about. That prayer right there was legitimate. Like, please, God, in the name of your son, don't let anything else negative or terrible happen to my balls. Please, I won't look at the pornos again. Like, I'll... Whatever my end of the bargain is, let me know. I won't do it. Or I'll hold up my end of the bargain. I just want kids out of these balls, man. Like, I've had three testicle operations. This shit sucks. I have no idea what my sperm count is. I assume it's high because I'd be getting horny and stuff. So, miracle American. You know, I, I don't bother going into the medical establishments and be like, can you tell me if I can sire children or not? Because that's fucking gay. I don't ask men for permission. I, it's up to God. You know, like how many people have been told you'll never make kids and then they end up with like octuplets and shit? Because the medical, medical science has been, in my life, in my own personal experience, just like one bullshit answer after another that backfires horrifically on me. It was a fucking dermatologist. I finally cucked and went and saw a dermatologist for my eczema, and that stupid son of a bitch told me. I'm not saying goddamn him or anything like that. That's up to God, his judgment is. But my personal judgment as, as one professional to another, this doctor didn't know his ass from his fucking elbow. Tried to tell me that eczema has not not dietary. He was like, oh yeah, we're like 99% sure it's not related to your diet. Bullshit! That stupid fucker gave me what resulted in probably the worst night of my life. Like, legit might have been the worst night of my life. I had to leave my fiance. My parents were out of town at the time. I went over to their house because I could feel the gluten-based, plant-based burrito. It was like that gluten meat, that fake meat that they put in a Chipotle burrito. I ate one of those. Fucking meat is made out of gluten. The, uh, the wrap was made out of gluten. I made it about 40 minutes before I started itching. And by then we were back home and I was like, honey, I gotta go. I don't want you to see what's about to happen. I can feel this like tidal wave of itchy shit coming on. This night resulted in me holding a pillow to my face, screaming like as loud as I, I didn't know I could scream. I, I screamed until I was like, ah, ah, like, like on fire is what I felt like. I felt like I was on fire that night. I was itching. I couldn't make the itching stop. Every itch made 20 more itches come up. I couldn't resist the urge to itch. I clawed myself like I was a fucking cat post. I mean, in the morning, I went to the emergency. I, I went to the emergency room that, that night at like 3 a.m. Like, I was having a full-on nervous breakdown because of the fucking medical establishment. Because I, I was stupid enough to listen to a fucking doctor. Doctors don't know a goddamn thing in this world. And goddamn them for acting like they do. And I mean goddamn them for acting like they do. If they want to assert that they think that they have a theory, sure, they can stay in honor that way. But I am so fucking mad at the medical. I'm st like, just remembering that night makes me fucking pistol whip angry at the medical establishment. Like where you take a pistol and you bash until there's just a pile of blood. I'm not going to do that, but that's the level of rage I feel when I think about it. I'm fucking so mad at them. And it's because they're stupid because they let themselves be stupid. There was a dermatologist who didn't know that you are what you fucking eat. And he has a medical degree. He has a, like, PhD. He's a doctor. A fucking specialist, no less, telling me that I'm not what I eat. That I can eat whatever I want. That eczema's not corrected to it. Like, you have... I could talk for another, like, the whole rest of this podcast. I'm sure all of you are sick of hearing about my fucking eczema problem, but I could seriously just spit vitriol at this doctor for the whole rest of however. I make it about 27 minutes before these things cut out on me and say, storage capacity filled. So I'm at 19 now. I could spend easily six more minutes 
But in 15 years, you know what this fucking dermatologist, like that was how long it was the last time I had eczema, was 15 years ago. In 15 years, the field of dermatology had nothing better to offer me than, you're not what you eat. <laughs> and what else? Steroid creams. Steroid creams are a fucking trap too. Like doctors don't know, like how the fuck? Like if you don't know that you should not place your faith in men, let my life be a lesson to anybody out there. You should not place your faith in men. Doctors, the medical establishment. I said it in the last one, fuck the medical establishment. I'm saying it again. Fuck the medical establishment. All right, top to bottom. You should not be a nurse. You want to care about people? How about you actually fucking care about people? Stop acting like science has all these answers. Start acting like prayer has some fucking answers and maybe you'll actually achieve the help that you purport to deliver all these people. They're like, well, we gave them chemotherapy so they could suffer into their twilight years instead of just telling them about hemp oil, vegan diets, CBD oil. Like, get yourself some marijuana extract and go vegan if you have cancer. It's like fucking 97% recidivism rates and curing rates, like they're curing cancer with vegan diets and cannabis oil. Meanwhile, I gotta worry about Made by Jim Bob engaging with retarded straw men about their fucking, fucking vegan morality arguments. Like, dude, you're wasting your time. Like, there's a lot of good things to be said about a vegan diet. None of them are that the animals are cute, so therefore we have to, like, cuck. This is fucking retarded opponents that Jim Bob picks. And he knows it, so I'm not gonna go at dude. Like, he, he got a solid mind on him. He knows that he's going up against fucking morons. He even said so. Like, one podcast after I commented on him going against the straw men of the vegan movement, he commented on it himself. Like, I don't need to check Jim Bob. He's smarter than me. But that's my beef with God. It's comedic, sort of, not really all the way. And the vitriol that I generally have toward the medical establishment. And the things that I was going to talk about and have forgotten to talk about, I'll talk about in the next one after I listen to this shit because I'm basically at the park now about to go hike in the woods and fix my broke back mountain of a gay back that I'm dealing with right now. And no, that doesn't mean I took it from Jake Gyllenhaal or whichever one was the top. No, Jake was definitely the bottom. Look at that pretty boy. He was definitely the bottom in that fucking movie, right? I saw that movie, but it's been years ago and I had to just think for a member. Like, the dude who played the Joker was the top. Of course. Of course. Obviously, Dead Heath Ledger was the top, you know? But you want to make an omelet, you got to break some egos.